What's up guys, we're back with another review, but today we're taking a look at something that is a little bit different because it's not a, uh, it's not a licensed property, it's not anything that has ever existed really before this toy line. We're taking a look at the Kickstarter line from the folks over at Lone Coconut. We're taking a look finally at the plunderlings and i have really been looking forward to these and you know of course the world kind of came to a screeching halt in 2020 so they got delayed and delayed and delayed and they're finally arriving unfortunately they didn't make it to me before year's end because honestly i really think my top 20 would have been changed if i had these guys in hand so who knows where they're going to end up in my list for 2021 but i'm really excited to take a look at these guys we're going to take a look at four of them uh, i've got four out of the out of the assortment for now with a few more on the way at some point but they come in a really snazzy packaging so you've got this big window with kind of a plunderling mouth with a figure in the window and then you've got actually a window on the top to let light in you've got kind of like a crate motif so the box itself is a cube and then you've got colors that correspond to the figure within and a product shot on the back, but what's really cool about this box is that once you actually get it open and you take the little guy out, there are these little ear flaps on the inside that you can pop into these slits on the box to make it look like the box is actually a plunderling head, which, I mean, it makes storing that kind of weird probably, but I do really like the idea behind this because it's goofy and it's fun and it kind of plays up the weird, crazy aspect of the figure and the line in general. So presentation is pretty much top notch. So let's do it. Let's pull these guys out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, the Plunderlings. And there are quite a few of these guys. This is just what I have currently. For reasons I can't quite remember, I didn't go all in on the Kickstarter, although I do have a an overwhelming majority of them on pre-order at Big Bad Toy Store still. So I'm gonna have more to talk about later. But as far as this video goes, we've got two of the little subsets. So there were various levels for the Kickstarter as usual with stretch goals and things like that. And various types of plunderlings would be unlocked as it went along. So we've got on the outer edges, we've got the two drench figures. These are of course uh, translucent figures and they're kind of like, uh, you know, merman plunderlings. They're a little bit different from the, from the rest of the pack. And then these were Kickstarter are exclusive, so you had to get them via the Kickstarter only. Uh, we've got Bubbler on the left and Swamp on the right, and then these two are the Feral uh, Plunderlings. So this is Cheddar and Zombone. And these, I mean, these two were the ones that I was like most excited about, and then when it came down to it, I had to get the ones that were Kickstarter exclusive because you can't get them anywhere else, and the people that do have them are already selling them for pretty crazy prices. So I think I've got a pretty solid subset of figures to talk about here. So let's jump right into it, uh, see what these little guys can do. I'm only going to talk about one as far as articulation goes because they are all the same and uh, there's no real reason to go through it four times. So we're going to use Zombone here as our test dummy and see what these little guys are capable of. So as far as moving these guys around, I will say right off the bat that I am very surprised at how well these things move. They do not feel to me like a Kickstarter figure. So I'm very, very happy with pretty much everything going on here. And the range of motion that these guys have are honestly really, really nice. Again, more than I expected, very surprising. The first of which is the head because the range on these heads is nuts. Look at that. He looks absolutely straight up. And then he looks all the way down. All of them can do this. There is no hindrance there. Uh, we do have a really good tilt side to side. It gives them a little bit of uh, attitude. I mean, it changes up their expression entirely just by crooking their head one way. And then of course you've got full rotation. Arms go out at the shoulders. They do rotate. We've got a single jointed, but it's like a full 90, maybe slightly more a degree elbow with rotation. You've also got lateral hinges and rotation at the wrist. There are vertical hinge hands in the box as well. We do have a diaphragm cut, so he goes all the way around, so he goes backwards a little bit, forwards and side to side, and then of course rotation. It's not full, full rotation, but it's 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 enough. These guys uh, have pretty decent movement at the torso. They have kind of like a squatty fat gut almost, so it does, it does kind of tighten things up a little bit when you're moving them, but I haven't had any issues with how they move. Uh, it's very, very fluid. You've got legs that go out about that far. This might be the one area where they are slightly limited in terms of how far they can kick their legs out to the side, but they kick their legs up more than 90 degrees, and then they kick back slightly. They've got a little plunder butt back there that stops them. You've got a thigh cut. We do have double jointed knees, so they go all the way back, not quite kicking his butt, but pretty, pretty close. And then you've got rocker and hinges, and they go back really far. 
and they go forward a little bit. It's not, it's not as much on the front kick as it is on the back, but they do have pretty good hinge and overall ankle movement. So these guys are, again, really, really well articulated. They are incredibly fun to pose, and I still, I mean, I'm going to do it again just because I love doing it. I can't get over how well these heads are articulated. Uh, they move so, so well, and everything about them is just fluid. No issues to speak of. They did uh, mention, I think when things started shipping out finally, that the drench figures probably would need to be heated up and that they'd be stuck. Mine were not stuck at all. Everything so far has been very fluid. No issues, no heat required on any of mine. Of course, your mileage may vary on that, but I have had no problems moving these guys around. They are, uh, they are a treat to play with, and I don't normally say anything like that. Now, as far as the overall aesthetics on these guys, we'll do them kind of in pairs because these two definitely go together and then the drench figures definitely go together. So you've got Zombone and uh, Cheddar here and they are very similar in construction. Of course, one has pants and one has kind of like a shorts situation going on, but overall they're very similar. Of course, you can notice that they do have different expressions. I figured I'd just throw some different heads on there. Each figure comes with three of the same heads. Uh, so you do have different expressions and overall looks that you can use. So, you know, you've got kind of their just normal smile expression on Zombone out of the box. And then you've got the more kind of devilish open mouth with those uh, ferocious looking teeth in there on Cheddar. And honestly, there is really nothing that I have to say negative about these figures when it comes to the look. The overall design and the overall aesthetic here is really well executed. Uh, they are cute, but kind of uh, devious looking little things. I'm very, very happy with their kind of odd squatty proportions. So you can see they've got kind of small upper arms and then they get these big muscular forearms that extend almost all the way down to the end of the legs. So they definitely have kind of weird proportions and it makes them look, uh, it makes them look really different. And when I get them with other figures here later on in the video, you'll understand more about what they really look like. Cause these are small figures, but they're also, they're also kind of not. They are, they're pretty substantial in terms of overall bulk because they are, again, kind of oddly proportioned, but I really like the way these guys are constructed. Paint applications are really spot on. The only thing that I would maybe mention is that they do have painted joints and you're going to see some flaking when you move that around. Otherwise, though, it's not, it's not really anything that I'm concerned about. Zombone's got some nice shading uh, on his kneecaps and even uh, on the back of his forearms there. It's not a lot, but it's a, it's a little bit. You've also got some in the ears on both. So Cheddar's got some pink and then uh, Zombone's got the uh, the black and kind of gray. And it's just a it's just a cool looking little figure. You know, like I said, I, they're a treat to play with. And honestly, I have not put these down the entire day that I've had them. It's been nonstop just messing around with them. And it's all about the overall aesthetic and just how fun they are to play with. These guys look really cool. There's something very, very different. The sculpt is spot on. I mean, we've seen we've seen promo shots and we've seen prototypes and we've seen test shots all throughout this whole Kickstarter process. And these guys look exactly like they've been envisioned. They look exactly like what we were promised. And I'm so, so happy with the finished result here. I think, I mean, honestly, at this point, I'm kind of kicking myself for not getting more right out the bat because I do have to wait for the rest of mine. But I think these two are a really good example of how a lot of shared parts can make two very, very different figures when it comes to paint applications. And then, of course, a few little paint change-ups or parts change-ups, not to mention the fact that the heads do add a lot of character to them and it makes them look it makes them look entirely different. This guy is cute and cuddly, and this guy looks like he's about to rob you. So I am, uh, I am very, very happy with the more normal style of Plunderlings. But, of course, we've got, we've got translucent figures to talk about, too, and that's, that's always something special for me. So our Drench figures, again, these were Kickstarter exclusive, so you had to get them in that initial Kickstarter. You can't go and say, get them at Big Bad Toy Store. These were only part of your initial Kickstarter order, so you had to be a backer. And I mean, these guys just spoke to me right away. Translucent figures that were exclusive to an already kind of exclusive toy line, you've got my attention. And, and I'm really, really happy with these guys. They are, however, very, very similar to the other figures. There's not much different in terms of their overall construction and appearance between the rest of them, but they do have a few defining characteristics, not just the fact that they have uh, translucent plastic. They have almost no paint on them. It is really just the teeth and the eyes. And you can see, you know, I've got a different head on here. So we've got the smiling face on Bubbler, and then I've got one of the third head sculpts on Swamp here. This is the uh, smiling closed mouth with the teeth showing, not the mouth open like I had on uh, Cheddar. But they've got, of course, different ears. So instead of having the more kind of elven style ears, I guess that might be the best way 
way to describe them. They've got kind of these, you know, webbed ones, kind of merman style, and then you've got webbed feet as well. So they definitely, they definitely look a little bit different and have that kind of defining characteristic. But it's all about the translucent plastic. I mean, you kind of know where this is all headed. I love translucent figures, and these are 100% translucent. There is no paint on them except for what you see right here and i think it's really cool i mean I, I dig being able to see the construction on the inside you can see all the joints you can watch it all move but there's also something about these colors they are super saturated while still being very translucent and they look so so cool next to each other i mean this is someone just kind of oohing and on over over translucent plastic that i like to begin with for reasons i don't quite really understand but these guys look great i'm really happy with the way they turned out again the same kind of sculpt we have on the other two figures so there's nothing there's nothing more to rant and rave about they look fantastic they have a unique design colors are really nice and bright and vibrant and those eyes and teeth really really pop against that translucent shell. Not to mention the fact that we do have these sort of exclusive-ish parts to these two figures that definitely make them stand out from the pack because, well, these guys are completely naked, so they get a few little things just to change them up a bit. But I think uh, I think they did a stellar job on these. Everything feels really good, even for translucent plastic. They don't feel weird. They don't feel extra fragile or anything like that. They seem to be on par with the rest of the line. But as you can see, the Drench also have one little surprise that the regular figures don't. They have glow-in-the-dark eyes and teeth. I wasn't 100% sure that these guys would glow, but charge them up and put them in the dark and they will shine like a beacon. So based on the kind of figures that these are and the kind of idea behind them, very, very happy to find that they do glow in the dark. Now, of course, we need to do some size comparisons just to give you an idea of how tall these guys are. They're four-ish inches in height, and I think they work really well. They are definitely meant to be paired with stuff that's from the six to seven inch range. So you've got your Beskar Mando here for a six inch figure. For a seven inch, we've got Lord Dragul, and it's it really works quite well. They don't look too small, but they also don't look huge. Uh, so they don't look like these big hulking monsters next to the Mando. They still look uh, quite tiny by comparison. Uh, let's move him aside to maybe something a little bit bigger. So here is uh, Toka from NECA. And you can see that, I mean, he just towers over them. So they've got a, a nice diminutive stature next to him. And then here they are with a Super 7 Turtle. So Raph still has a lot of size on them, but not as much. And then we'll throw in a Marvel Legends too, just for good measure. Here they are with Kang. So you can see that they do have a pretty good presence next to other lines. They're not too big. They're not too small. They're going to be worked in really, really well with pretty much everything you have. Now, as far as accessories goes, these guys kind of have a, an accessory count that varies from figure to figure. So a lot of the other figures that I don't have have a lot more than these guys, but they have a pretty solid spread. The Feral have more than the Drench, but they all kind of have at least a base level of accessories as far as heads, hands, and then some sort of a weapon or add-on piece. So the Feral figures, Cheddar and Zombone, have have head attachments and what's really really interesting about these is that they utilize magnets to keep things in place all of the all of the figures not just ones that come with it so the drench have them as well and then all of their extra heads also have them so you've got uh, like the mohawk comes with cheddar and you can see it's a really nicely sculpted shock of blue hair but you can pop this on uh, swamp if you want to to give him some hair or you can take this really cool skull mask that came with uh, Zombone, which looks really fantastic, nice sculpt, great detail, and put it on Bubbler. I really, really like that. I think it's just a really cool idea, and it works exceptionally well. No issues swapping parts, and honestly, the ability to easily swap parts makes me really happy, uh, just because you can change up the entire look of a figure just by putting the hair on them, for example, or something like that. So there's a lot of interchangeability there. They do have some unique accessories, though, although, of course, this stuff could also be shared. So Cheddar comes with the baseball bat, and this thing is huge. I mean, it's it's almost as big as they are. It's really big. Uh, a lot of sculpt on it. Everything is textured, so all those little painted details you see are also sculpted on there. The X's and then the, the stripes on them, all sculpted. Really well done. Holds it nicely. Uh, you can even get him to hold it in a two-handed pose. Zombone comes with a big bone club, so white with some black accents on it. He can hold this just fine, no, no problems, because of course they all come with gripping hands. And then the Drench figures come with the same accessory. They've got 
a trident which has a brown handle with some black accents and then a nice uh, sort of coppery gold color for the tines at the end. So these guys uh, obviously play up the idea that these are underwater plunderlings and that they're some sort of merman style creature, but they also all share the same kind of ideas when it comes to extra swappable parts. So each figure comes with a set of uh, splayed finger hands and then they've also got a set like what Swamp has here with a set of gripping hands. They sold uh, fist hands extra for a couple bucks each. I did not get those for whatever reason. So there are optional hands if you if you chose to go that route. And then they also come with three heads each. So they've got a set of heads with the just the closed mouth smile. You've got a head with the smiling but with the teeth exposed. And then you've got a head with the smile, teeth exposed, but mouth more open. And you can sort of see the inside of the mouth. All of them come with these. So you've got three options for each figure, two sets of hands for each figure, and then you've got swappable headpieces that work on all the figures, as well as accessories that could be uh, thrown in and out of each different figure. So they do come with a lot of stuff, and the ability to swap stuff like the, the mohawk and the mask really kind of ratchet up the play value for these guys quite a bit. I did get one of the bonus items, though. Well, I got two of them. I got one for each drench figure, and these are hatchlings. So these guys they're sort of, you know, extra things that aren't included with the normal purchase, so you had to buy them separately through the Kickstarter. They're like five bucks each, if I recall. And basically what they are are blank, small, like, sort of toddler bodies. They have moving arms, so the shoulders have hinges and then rotation. And then, of course, the hands also have their own independent articulation, depending on which ones you use. But you've got a place to utilize some of those extra parts. So they don't come with anything else. It's just a body with arms and legs. You put an extra head on them from your plunderling that you already have, and then you use one of your extra sets of hands. So you put those on there and then use them in conjunction to just utilize some of those parts so that they aren't just sitting in a bag or in a box somewhere, which I think is pretty creative. It's really nice. And of course, the, uh, the little body was quite cheap to begin with. And then of course, here they are together. So there's a uh, giving idea of size. So there, there he is with Bubbler, with the uh, with the actual uh, full size one. We can zoom back out a little bit. They are really small. They don't do a whole lot, but it's a cool way to utilize parts. I should have gotten a few more. I keep saying that when it comes to everything with this with this line so far. I should have gotten more of everything, but it's a really cool idea. Works super super well. And again, it's nice to be able to get some of those accessories out of the box and actually in use. So, yeah, I'm not sure there's a much reason to really go on anymore. I just really like these figures. Even the boxes are cool. The crate design with the ears, the whole deal. It's really fun and goofy, and I love that kind of stuff. I love the inclusion of magnets as far as how the accessories work on the, on the heads, the overall design, the sculpt, the build quality, the feel, the paint applications, all of it. It seems so, so professional. Like, this does not seem like something that I had to go to Kickstarter for. This certainly seems like something that a more seasoned toy maker is making. I'm, I'm overall very, very happy with my purchase. The only real regret here is that I did not back it more. I wish I had more of these figures in hand already. Granted, I've got a bunch on pre-order with Big Bad, but I've got to wait for those and I don't want to wait. I'm even more impatient for them now that I know what to expect. So yeah, if you didn't get on the Kickstarter train with this one, I would suggest checking out Big Bad uh, to pre-order whatever you can while you can, because once the hype is going on these, they are going to disappear, I'm sure of it. So that's going to do it for this look at the Plunderlings from Lone Coconut. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.